Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can take images like these and seamlessly blend them together to make a final image. It's all done in Photoshop and it's easier than it might at first look. To get started with this project, I have the images open that I'm going to work with. So this is the main image and then I have two others that I'm going to add. I'm going to start with this one. So I'm going to display the layers palette by choosing Window and then Layers. Right click on the background layer here and click Duplicate Layer. Now you can choose which document this layer is duplicated into. So this is my main image, so I'm going to click on it and click OK. And let's go back to the main image and you'll see that we have two layers here, the original image and our new image. Now these images can be downloaded from online. They're from a site called unsplash.com and that's a site where you could download free images and all of these are by the same photographer. So you may wish to download them so that you can follow along. With the background layer, I'm going to turn it into a regular layer and I do that by just dragging the lock icon onto the trash can. I find it easier to work with these images with this layer on top. So I'm just going to drag it above the other layer just so it's on top of everything. Temporarily, I'll turn it off and I'm going to position this image in position. So I'm going to grab the Move tool and just move it in to where I think it's going to appear in the image. Now I think it's a bit large, so I'm going to press Control-0 to zoom out. Now I can get the handles of the image. I'm going to hold the Shift key as I just drag down to resize the image. It's important to use the Shift key so that you drag it in proportion and you don't lose the proportions of the image as you work. I'll click the check mark. And now I'm going back to turning this image on. And now I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. To blend these two images together, I'm going to use a mask and I'm going to use it for a couple of reasons. The eraser tool would work, but it's very unforgiving. And if you need to undo things, then you have to undo them in order. The masking tool is really the best tool to use here. And it's a simple and editable way of masking these two images and blending them together. So I'm going to click the topmost layer and click here on Add Layer Mask. And that just adds a layer mask to the image. You want to click on the layer mask so it has this little sort of border around it that's telling you that you're going to paint on the mask and not on the image itself, although you're going to do your painting in this area. You'll need to set the default colors. So I just click here to set the default colors and I'm going to start with black because this is white at the moment. It tells me that black is going to give me some action. I'm going to select the brush tool. I'll click open the brush dialog here. I want to use one of these brushes. So I want something that has a soft edge. So its hardness is set to zero. It doesn't matter much what size the brush is because that's easy to change. I'm just hovering the brush over the image right now. It's a little bit small. So I'm going to press the close square bracket to enlarge it. Again, before I paint, just making sure that I have the mask targeted. I'm now going to paint on the image here. And when I do, you can see that I'm bringing back in the image from below. Now at this point, generally what I'll do is bring in the entire image from below just so I can see it in position. And now I'm going to switch colors. I'm going to paint with white. And what I'm going to do is bring back this top image so I can see just the bits of the bottom one that I want to see. I'm going to start with a slightly smaller brush. And I'm going to start painting. And I want to continue to use the sky that I've got from this image. So it's a sort of little bit more turquoise sky than blue. So I'm just going to make sure that I get the sky the way I want it to look. And I want her hair because that was really one of the compelling things I saw in this image as I picked it out was that she has just wonderful, wonderful hair. So I'm just sort of trying to work out where her hair is. And just painting in this area. If I feel like I've covered up something that I didn't want to cover up, I'm just going to switch colors. So I've switched by pressing the key X or I can switch them by just clicking on this icon here and then just go back and pick up the color I was painting with. Switch to X and then I can go back to painting the mask on or off. And you can do that as much and as often as you like. Now I think there's some more blue sky in here that I 
pretty much might want. Now at some point when you've finished painting with black and white, you'll find that the effect that you're getting is way too harsh. So you can start painting with grey. Just click to open this dialog and pick up, for example, a mid-grey. Now the mid-grey is going to work a little bit like the black, but it's going to bring in some elements of both images. The closer you get to black with your paint colour, the more the brush is going to work as if it were black. The closer you get to white, the more it's going to work as if you were working with a white brush. Now I'm liking the effect on her fate, but I'm really not quite happy yet with the straw or the grass here. So I'm just going to see if I can pick up something that's going to work well here. Just get the texture. Well, I see from the original image, if I hold the shift key here, I can turn off the mask. You can see that there's actually a big blade of grass here, and that's causing that sort of movement in her shoulder, that sort of effect in her shoulder. Now, I may or may not want that. I can make a decision about that as I paint. Sometimes it's helpful to be able to remove the mask. Again, just shift click on the mask to hide it so you can see what's in the original image that you might want to bring in here. So I'm going to continue to work on this. I'm going to just stop talking and just speed up the video as I work on blending these two images together just a little bit more. Now once you've finished working blending in the first image, there is actually opportunity to bring in a second image here and I have one that I could use. This is the image I'm going to use. So I'm going to right click on the background layer, click duplicate layer and drop it into the working image and click OK. Again, let's go back to our working image. Because this layer is on top, I'm going to move it below the working image so that I can use the same mask on it. But I do need to move it out of the way a bit, so I'm going to select this layer and I'm going to start moving this out of the way. I need to turn Auto Select off so that I'm working on the layer below and not the topmost layer. So I'm just going to position the woman pretty much where I want her to be. I can see her here in the preview. And none of this image is actually really affecting this one here, but if it were, I could drop it behind the other one so that this one on this side is going to take precedence over the two of these, which will allow me to lie them underneath each other if I need to. I could also crop it if I wanted to. Now I think this image is going to be a little bit big, so let's just see how it's looking. Yes, I think it's a bit big, so I'm just going to hold the Shift key down as I just resize it and move it up a little bit. So I think I'll place her about there. Click the check mark and go back to viewing my original image over the top. Now I can use the exact same mask to mask this out or in. Painting on this mask will not only affect what we see of this image, but also affect what we see of this image. So again, I'm going back to my default colours. I'm going to paint with black just by pressing X. I'm just going to paint in her face here. Now, I think she's too far over still, so I'm just going to go and get her here. Just move her across. I want a little bit of difference between where she is and where the front version of her is. So again, I'm going to go back to painting now. Now you'll see I'm missing areas of image here, so I need to be careful that I paint those back out on the mask. So let's go back to the mask, let's switch to white paint and make sure that we paint this in here so we don't have any gaps in our image. Now you can also change the opacity of your paintwork, so you could decrease the opacity here to get a little bit of a blending effect, and sometimes that can help blend the two images together too. So you're able to paint with white, but perhaps at a lower opacity. I'm going to paint with black here to bring that detail in her hair back a little bit. And I'm just switching between the two colours, white and black just to get the result that I'm looking for. You'll find that it's pretty easy to get this masking in place. 
The beauty, of course, of working with a mask is that this is just so forgiving. If you make a mistake, you just get to paint it back over again later on. It's not like anything is ever set in concrete. And provided we save this image as a PSD file, we could even come back in a few weeks time and still be able to edit this image. So it's um, yeah, just a very forgiving way of working. I'm actually pretty happy with the image that I've got right now. I'm happy in terms of the masking, but I'm not happy in terms of the detail because right now my eye is being drawn to these lighter versions of the woman in the background and not the one in the foreground. So I think I need to make a couple of adjustments to the image. I'm going to click here on the elliptical marquee tool and I'm setting quite a large feather, 100 pixels for this image. I'm just going to drag over her face here if I need to move the ellipse, I can just hold the space bar as I move it just until I've completed drawing it and I'm going to let go. I'm going to apply a curves adjustment to this image to lighten these back areas of the image. Then I'm going to come in and fix her face. So right now I don't want this area to be selected. I want the outside area to be selected. So I'm going to choose Select Inverse and now I'll choose Layer, New Adjustment Layer, Curves and click OK. Now if I drag upwards you'll see that the curves adjustment is affecting the outside of the image. You'll also see that I've got a very soft line here. That was because I feathered that selection. Now obviously I've got way too much of a curve adjustment. but I'm just going to drag up here to lighten the image. I'm just going to look here on the image to see where this area of detail is. Well they're all in the sort of darker areas of the image here so I can just drag up here on the darker areas of the image to lighten them. And I'm going to come back and add another adjustment, again a curves adjustment but this time I'm going to focus on her face. So I'm going to the elliptical marquee tool, I'm going to drag out the elliptical marquee again. This time I don't need to invert it because I actually want to affect her face. So again I'm going to choose Layer, New Adjustment Layer and then Curves. Click OK. And here I want to apply a Curves Adjustment to her face because I want to lighten up her face. And now even though I lightened the background of the image quite a bit, the fact that I've lightened her face has really helped us draw attention to her face but I've lightened both areas independently of each other. Now these effects are editable so we can always come back into this curves adjustment layer and alter it if we want to. And we could also say you know this face is really good but this one's still a little bit dark. Well let's just go and add an adjustment to just this one. Again let's go and get the elliptical marquee tool. Let's just drag over her face here. Just going to position this in a pretty good position. I'm going to choose Layer, New Adjustment Layer, Curves, OK. And again just see if I can't lighten this area just a little bit. That's the before and that's the after and I think that's a pretty good result there. So very quickly we've been able to seamlessly blend three images together. It's done using a mask and the way I prefer to do it is to put my main image on top, the other images on the bottom and just paint on the mask. And then we had a look at the curves adjustment and were able to adjust the image just to draw attention to the part of the image that we're most interested in which is this girl's face. And I really think that those images were a little bit on the underexposed side. It looks to me just a little bit better, lighter. So there is how you can seamlessly blend two or more images together in Photoshop. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more video tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.